make it interactive so that the participants will have a chance to ask the questions, but also to share some of their experience or their opinions on some of the topics that we're going to have a look at today. So in order to do that, you have you have the option to ask questions as you probably are all aware there is a question box and you can key in your questions there and then i will call out the questions um also we have some that were submitted so i'll call out those questions at some point we will also open it up to hear from the participants as well to hear from all of you about some of your experience and at that point, either we will have the little hand that goes up and you can click on that and I will open the line or, um, or I will take some of your questions um, or some of your suggestions that will come in through the question box. Okay, good. And with that, so if you have questions as we go along, please do send in your questions through the question box and Diane will be happy to take those. So Diane, um, just to say a little bit more about yourself, Diane, you are the international chair and you are also a senior partner at C4CS, which specializes in strategic communications and coaching corporate leaders. So with that, Diane, I will hand over to you. Thank you, Diane. Thank you so much, Helen. I appreciate that. And I appreciate the opportunity to be with you today. I did want to, um, to make a note as, as we were trying to uh, get everything up and running. We had planned to actually be visible to everyone um, today, but uh, unfortunately, our headshots will have to serve as our as our viewing for the attendees. Uh, I, I put on earrings and everything, but that's okay. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for being with us today. I hope that you will see this as an interactive opportunity to share your insights as well, well as your questions. This is uh, an opportunity for really some really top-notch sharing, I believe, today. So there will be information that will go through, but also the opportunity for everyone to learn from each other, which I really think is a valuable opportunity. The brain trust in the virtual room, so to speak, is really unmatched. So as we know, communications uh, is an increasingly multifaceted and therefore the importance of the range of competencies that are needed to engage with and effectively communicate with diverse stakeholders is growing immensely. Both internal and external communications is, is unlike ever before in terms of the depth and breadth of skills and competencies needed to be effective. And oftentimes, I, I believe many communicators are, are called into that decision-making space only when something difficult happens or there's a crisis that provides an opportunity for communicators to step forward and lead in a collaborative fashion. Um, we often become the central facilitator to engage leaders in alignment and show the critical function of the communications expertise that we have and that serves as a business partner. So it's, it's an opportunity really here for us to talk about how we raise the level of understanding of the critical power of a communications professional to add to the success of a business or an agency. So what is a communications leader? Well, I think as we, as we look at um, the first slide here, we'll see that a communications leader understands the business strategy and is providing solutions that affect the bottom line. And I think that that is probably the overarching mindset that communicators really more and more need to adapt in order to be getting a seat at that proverbial table where the business partners live. So what is it that you can do to think differently? Quite frankly, I, I see communicators um, 
able to exponentially grow their impact if they put on that mindset of the business owner. So if this were your business, your corporation, your nonprofit, your NGO, how would you approach problems? What would you see that could be improved and how can you provide those solutions? It's almost like the old, the old school SWOT analysis. If this were your business, what would be the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities, the threats? And how would you, as a communications expert, bring together the different business leaders, the C-suite professionals, to provide those solutions, those answers, to, to really seize opportunities? So put that mindset of a business partner on and, and approach, I think, your communications role from that aspect. So obviously, being bold and proactive is another skill set, another competency area that really must be grown for communicators to get into that business partner mode. Again, it's about finding solutions to problems as well as seizing opportunities and at the end of every day, adding to the bottom line. Strategy, the strategic capacity that acknowledges what has often been sort of a narrow focus. I think communicators often feel like order takers. We hear that a lot, right? So just go and do this project or get this out the door. No, we know that we can be highly strategic decision makers who really do drive business for success. As we say in IABC, the communications profession can drive communication as a force for good in business and society. So put on that mindset of that strategic business partner and approach communications from that aspect. And I, I've come up with uh, the seven E's that I, I kind of feel address critical areas for communicators to keep in mind as they grow in their profession and they seek that, that higher level of being a business partner. Ethics, expertise, engagement, enterprise, efficiency, empathy, and empowerment. So first, ethics. You know, I'm sure many may be aware that the 2017 Edelman Trust Barometer the headline reveals global implosion of trust. That's the headline, the global implosion of trust. Pretty powerful. And in addition to that headline, CEO credibility at the lowest level ever, the credibility of leaders is in peril. That's really startling and disturbing, but also it brings to mind the opportunities we have to change them. As communicators, we can play a critical role in this arena. If you want to move to a seat at the decision-making table, credibility is nothing short of essential, both for you and your company. And credibility, as we know, is built on trust. Trust is built on ethical standards of conduct. Reputation is the result. In order to be a business leader, your reputation is your key. What your stakeholders of any type, internal or external, say and think about your expertise and your ethics, ethics as a professional say everything. So to engage with business leaders, we have to have credibility. Who wants to engage with someone who they question their credibility, their trustworthiness, or their good reputation? And I, I, at this point I'd love to make a, a bit of a plug here for the IABC Code of Ethics. As you may know, in January we issued a statement on upholding ethical standards in communication and launched a petition on change.org encouraging others to take a stand with us and I encourage you to check it out and also the two IABC chairs blogs on the subject 
of ethical standards and professional communication. And so next is expertise. And Helen, I don't know if we could get to um, the next and then the next. <laughs> Not too much on there, but just the words. But the next one is expertise. So expertise from, um, from the business leader description on the IABC career roadmap, the, the global standard that, that I hope you're aware of. Communication professional at this milestone demonstrates the ability to serve at a senior peer level and leads within an organization by providing counsel and helps to set that organizational direction at a strategic level. So there's some key words there. You are functioning because of your expertise at a peer level with the senior decision makers in your organization and you're helping lead that organization by providing your input, your counsel, again, your expertise. And you are using your expertise to help set the organizational direction at a strategic level. So pulling yourself, again, to that mindset of being that strategist who's looking at the, at the big picture and seeing where you can put your expertise to provide solutions and results. Engagement is the next E. And engagement means moving ahead in your career and your business, working with others to achieve mutual goals. So learning the work styles, the personalities of your coworkers, and your stakeholders in order to gain collaboration mm -hmm. and attain successful professional relationships. You might have that mindset of a rising tide lifts all boats, right? Well, joining together for greater success is really indicative of a communications leader. Enterprise. Innovation is more important than ever. In fact, establishing a mindset of, of creativity in, in many studies has been shown to be a growing important competency for communicators and business partners. Innovation and creative thinking. Thinking about new ways in your business to resolve problems, to meet challenges, and to seize opportunities keeping fully informed about your stakeholders and what may engage them in the near and the long term. Again, create, creativity in your mindset, approaches to problem solving, more important than ever in today's global marketplace. So how can you think in new ways to add to the success of your company and the bottom line? Think outside that proverbial box, right? Efficiency. So this is critical in terms of being a business partner. How can you lead in making the business run smarter, if you will, from your perspective as a communications expert? How would you make the business run more efficiently? What areas could benefit from a new approach to meeting goals? How can data be mined and used? to create new insights, new methods, new questions, which lead to new solutions. Think of efficiencies. Empathy. Now, you know, business is about people, right? Simply put, business boils down to individual human beings. So all the data in the world, in my view, works for naught if the human factor is not at its core. So putting yourself in another's mindset, their background, their challenges, their needs, their goals. I think communicators are naturally really adept at this, but really focusing on empathy in terms of understanding the power of words on a particular individual, on a, on a stakeholder, 
And you know, it really is about when you read about successful CEOs, there's a book um, in uh, profiling 20 CEOs called Before I Was a CEO. And Richard Edelman is profiled in there. And pretty much across the board, the notion is use your head and your heart. And that might sound a little um, squishy, perhaps, but the, the power of using your head and, and heart is really, really so important. I believe at the end of the day, achieving your professional goals really does come down to not what you do or what you are, but who you are. You can make that impact with empathy. Empowerment. Leaders become leaders not just by advancing themselves as we know. Leaders are leaders because they help others advance. And if you think of some of the leaders you admire and who you would like to be mentored by, I would, I would imagine that those leaders are the ones who have raised others around them to greater success. Leaders are leaders because they help others advance. So how can you support your peers and colleagues in meeting their goals? That puts you on the path to your leadership. How can you surround yourself with those who you can mentor and also be mentored by? Again, leaders lift up those they work with in their business and their communities. And above all, leaders really do instill confidence and resiliency in their peers and colleagues. I think those are two of the, the most powerful traits to develop in moving forward in your professional and, quite frankly, your personal life, in my view. Instilling, nurturing, fostering, encouraging confidence and resiliency. And I don't know if we have any questions yet, but I do encourage you to, uh, to join in and share any thoughts, any feedback so far, any questions. Would love to, if not hear from you, at least uh, see your messages. Um, Helen, I'm not sure if um, people are able to actually speak to us, but I believe that they can just write their, their input or feedback or questions in the, in the notes. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, Diane, uh, yes, technically people should see the hand which they can click on in order to um, say that they're communicating, that they're asking questions. So, we do have somebody who wants to ask a question here. So, I'm just going to see who that is. Um, it right. is, let me just check who... Um, Okay, the hand did go up. So does anybody want to put their hand up again so I can see who that, who that was? Um, so is it um, Christina or is it Eileen? I wish I could see, but I... Um, is it Heather? Is it Ginger? Is it Eileen? Oh, well. Um, feel free to raise your hand again or feel free just to, uh, to type in your comment or a question. And we should be able to go from there. All right, so shall we move on until we get another bit of input? Sure. Sure, All let's right. do that. So when we talk about executive communication, we know now that there has to be a proactive strategy 
we're no longer in the world of reactive. It is keeping our eyes on the horizon and again informing that company leadership of the external environment keeping your finger on the pulse being the eyes and ears out there you know sometimes we see the c-suite perhaps living in a bit of a bubble and that's where communicators can really keep them informed on issues that may be coming in the industry, they can provide strategic counsel at that point and again become seen as a business partner. Strategically shaping a platform in which the company can operate and focusing on regulation and reputation and on that bullet you might think in terms of your particular discipline along the lines of how does that impact your area whether it's government public affairs uh, crisis management sustainability regulations that kind of thing but again being proactive keeping your eyes on the horizon in not just your company but in your industry and quite frankly in the the global marketplace across the board You know, and executive communicators at the highest level are difference makers. And what do we mean by that? We mean that, that the opportunity for communicators to make an impact in their business really is an opportunity for education. Sometimes we have to educate this, the senior business partners about why communication is so important and how communication is so important and actually show the results. You know that I think historically has, has hampered um, communicators from really getting the seat at that table because it was seen as more of a soft skill that couldn't be measured. Well, now we can measure, and there are new tools out there so that we can show the impact that communication has to add to the success. It really is, it, communication can be a make or break. I mean, we see far too many errant tweets from CEOs or business leaders or those in, uh, in decision-making positions that have impacted a company negatively. So the power of communication is seen every day. And you know, in terms of uh, the Edelman barometer that we talked about earlier, this quote from Catherine Wieser, who's the global chair of Edelman's corporate practice, really is powerful, I think. Business is the last retaining wall for trust. Its leaders must step up on the issues that matter for society. So again, driving communication as a force for good in business and society, taking that, that phrase from, from what we see as the underpinning in IABC, especially of the foundation. Be that communicator who can make a difference. You can make a difference to the bottom line. You can make a difference to your internal and external communication. Uh, associates but also making a difference to society and really showing the impact of professional communication. There was a, a report published by Corn Ferry citing some skills that an executive leader must have. And these really do hit at the heart of a communication professional as well. Reputation, values, and culture. Communicators know well how important it is to communicate professionally about reputation, values, and culture of your organization. You do often represent the brand of your company or your organization. 
you you are the face and the voice literally and figuratively most often for your company an executive leader must innovate new systems again back to that mindset of the enterprising communicator how can you be more innovative about your communication work and lead to the bottom line define and activate that corporate character what does that mean that means that you do represent your company the reputation the brand both inside your company inside your industry but also in society more than ever with social media it's critical to remember that corporate character that you represent you ensure content for external stakeholders that is accessible so oftentimes we may and accessible to me means it is meaningful so obviously access to content is generally not a problem in this day and time because it's everywhere but how do we create meaning so, so that it does make a difference so that it's understood and so that we get buy-in to achieve the goals that are set out and again the power of analyzing data communicators need to think as business people analyzing data but then turning that data into something that is valuable across the organization giving it context giving it meaning communicating so it resonates communicating priorities to resonate with the stakeholders including those in the boardroom including those in the c-suite including those peers inside the organization and audiences outside the organization so I think so, Diana, I, so I, Diana, I think this is a good chance to a good time to ask if there are any questions and we did have um, um, somebody did have a question earlier on and I think um, the, the their screen froze or something so um, this is a chance now if anybody wants to ask a question you can key into the question box so right now that's the best format so um, if anybody has a question um, I know I have um, but let's uh, wait a minute or two and see if anybody has a question um, so I'll start the, the, the ball rolling. Um, so I suppose it gives us an idea here what we see as what, is, what might be important to a corporate leader. So is there anything else that you see is important to the corporate leader from the communications perspective? I, am? I really do think it's that business this mindset Helen you know mm -hmm. um, one of the top recruiters in the communications profession and PR and marketing are encouraging communicators to actually get their MBA if you are seeking to really be at the highest levels of the organization an MBA is being seen as almost a requirement now for communicators so that tells you how important it is for that business understanding and whether or not you actually go to get that degree there are plenty of opportunities for learning uh, about uh, business and how corporate communications or organizational communications impact business at a strategic level and having having that understanding that education that knowledge is really powerful because you can you can be at the center of 
raising those questions about how how can we be more innovative? How can we how can we really seize opportunities, prepare for challenges, respond to stakeholders again in a meaningful way, in a way that resonates with them? So it sounds like you're suggesting that these this is a competence that one can acquire through an MBA. Um, Diane, is there any other any other courses where you know we can uh, acquire the competencies that perhaps the uh, the corporate leader needs and expects from us? Right. Well, of course, I'm going to strongly suggest checking out the IABC Academy, where there is a wealth of opportunity to advance your professional expertise. Uh, there's professional development aimed at the strategic advisor level that will help you um, understand communications from a business perspective as well as honing your particular expertise in your chosen discipline. So the IABC Academy, I hope that you will you will mind that. And of course just you know being aware of the other opportunities in your area for business classes and corporate communications classes. Again, depending on your discipline and your goals, find the course that fits best for you and certainly would suggest or recommend meeting with people who have attained the level of um, a business partner, if you will, that you admire and seek out their counsel, their recommendation. How did they get to where they are and get that mentoring? So maybe they do suggest that you go and take a particular course or a, a business program or study a particular field which would help you advance in your area. Now, Diane, is there any other kind of knowledge that we need to acquire in order to partner with the business leader? What do you? What would your suggestions be? Just um, you know, I think um, we're we're getting ready to kind of talk a little bit about contributing to business value. So I think looking for again those those business leaders as well as communication leaders who you can study, you can read, you can hopefully be mentored by and setting up a, a conversation, reaching out. I mean there's resources on LinkedIn for instance. Uh, again, IABC offers many opportunities for connecting with communication leaders around the world. As you know, Helen, I'm sure, um, IABC members are always open to connecting with another member. So you really literally can pick up the phone and call someone who is in your area and or in your discipline and ask them a question or get some mentoring or propose, you know, propose a, a, a question to them that maybe they can give you some insights on. I know uh, a very successful communicator here where I am in Charlotte, North Carolina was getting promoted up the company, up the company into areas where she had no previous experience but she was so keen on, on approaching communication in a strategic level that they were putting her into different areas of the business and she recounts several times where she called someone in another country in this particular instance I'm thinking of it was a, a corporate communications leader in London and they picked up the phone and mentored her about how, how to approach her new position and she said it was invaluable. I can uh, I can imagine that that seems like a an ideal way to um, to onboard a new role 
and to tap into the network and communications network that we all usually have. Good. Absolutely. And you know, I uh, I would like to also just make a note about the the new IABC certification program. We have the the CMP level that's been um with two years now, and we are launching the senior communications management professional at the IABC World Conference, which is aimed at the strategic advisor level of communicator. So look at opportunities there for not only just um, the courses from the academy to increase your professional development, but also actually looking at certification to give you um, a little bit of a leg up in your career. So I hope Helen is not the only one who's asking me questions. <laughs> we, we're open to all questions, right? Yes, yes, we sure are, and I haven't <laughs> seen I haven't seen one yet, but it might be just easier to uh, to type them in the questions box, I guess, since we're having we are having the classic technical difficulties today on a couple of things, but um, that might be easier. Um, we do have some questions here. Um, our first question is from Yvonne, and Yvonne asks, um, asks if you can share your tips on influencing leaders who don't buy into internal communications, who see it as the post box for information to staff. Diane, uh, can I leave that one with you? Tips on influencing the leaders. Well, I think that um, having that, and, and we're kind of, we're getting into uh, that area a little bit in terms of getting buy-in. I think many leaders make the mistake of of undervaluing the impact of internal communication until there's no or poor communication and it's it goes for external as well so how can you have really a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them and lay out the results that you've achieved with your communication skills so how have you addressed a particular issue or a goal internally and what were the results so a lot of times you know it's it's just kind of making those proof points and saying here's here's what we've achieved here's why it matters and here's why I need your support to do even better here's how I can add to the success of the company again it's that that challenge in terms of helping the decision makers within the company understand that without professionally crafted successful communication the company will suffer so how can we get them to to really look at what we're doing and I would suggest just getting the opportunity to sit down and say you know, lay out the business plan, lay, lay out the the issue, the challenge, how it was addressed, and the results, and make it as black and white as possible. And make it resonate with them. Speak in terms, you know, it's just like anything in communication. We have to speak in terms, again, that resonate with the person we're speaking to. So if the person we're speaking to is totally focused on bottom line and numbers, if it's the CFO, 
We speak in terms and use language that resonates with them. So who is this person? What will hit home with them? What will get them to understand that you are a critical part of the organization and need to be at that strategic decision-making level? Uh, I think also uh, building on this, uh, Diane, on this question is is perhaps how we position ourselves as business partners among business leaders. How do we talk about what we do and what's important and how we how we drive change or support the business uh, results? What what would your suggestions be on how we how we position ourselves? And what, what we talk about, how do we talk about what we do in order to influence our, yeah, in order to influence or persuade leaders? Well, I think it really goes back again to that mindset. If this were your organization, put on that mindset of being that business partner. And in your conversations about what you do, why you do it, and why it matters, it doesn't just matter why it's critical to the success of the organization. Use that language and, and move into that mindset of a business partner. So educate those around you, both up and down, the, the organization in terms of strategic communication and the impact on reputation, for instance, or internal communication and the impact on productivity of your coworkers. Customize the language so there's that understanding, that light bulb moment. And maybe um, if we move to the, the next slides, Helen, this might address some of, mm -hmm. some of this mm -hmm. as well. So Diane, we have a couple of questions here. Um, if, I, if I can ask some of these questions, and I think they also build on, on what we've already talked about. We have um, Marky as asking about um, what are some of the tactics that communicators can use to develop relationships with leaders and to learn their voice. What's your view on that? Well, actually, that's that's uh, a great question because we're we're getting ready to come into that area. But you know, it really does come down to getting that one-on-one -on -one conversation. Get get a meeting, even if it's asking your C-suite, your CEO, your CFO, your COO for 15 minutes. Build those relationships. Be visible. Back to what we said early on, be bold and proactive. So, so starting there in terms of having the conversation, get an understanding of the individual in the decision-making seat and then figuring out how you can support them as a communicator and get their attention, get them to understand that you are driving results in your role. So understanding um, what their idea of success is and aligning it. Thinking strategically about how you can align with that business partner to help them achieve success. And you know, owning the whole, the, the term owning the whole, again, that mindset of the business partner where you own the whole, so, so you feel like you're um, not just an outsider, but you are part of the core value of the business. Focus on what is mission critical, not just in your department, but for the company. Create, uh, 
create the space and, and just build your capabilities for the future. Grow your capabilities for the future. Look at the tools that are out there. Look at the courses that are out there where you can really refine your skills and become the expert that, that the company needs. And I think, Diane, when we talk about capabilities and competencies, I suppose there's the other side of the coin, and that's about the communicator themselves. What, what are their, what kind of attributes? Um, we have here a question from Greg. And Greg asks, what would you say are the five most desirable attributes for communicators, leaders, to achieve for stakeholders to perceive the enterprise in the most positive light in line with their values? What wow, are the suggestions a... for tangible ways to bring these attributes to life? Thanks, Greg. For well, that. Thank you, Greg. That's a great question and something that um, I guess we could all write a book about, right? Um, I would really go back to the, the seven Ds that we talked about earlier and looking at how you can pull out your particular skill set and make it uh, part of your business. So the, the competencies of thinking like a business leader, being uh, the one who empowers those around them for mutual success, growing your expertise in terms of professional development, engaging with those with whom you want to work. So if you want to work with the C-suite people, get those meetings, have that conversation, be bold and proactive, be enterprising, be creative. Maybe um, to get that creative juice going in our minds, we, we often need to take an art class or uh, a, a, you know, you know mm -hmm. there's a lot of um, there's a lot of new interest in sort of doing that um, that stand up where you're on the stage and you have to think quickly on your feet. That's a great skill for communicators. How can you show that you're being more efficient? How are you showing that you are empowering? those around you as well as the organization. So those skill sets to pull out from, from some of the things we talked about include just being the one who does more, goes far beyond what is required. Just like in any professional who really achieves great success, they always do more. They're always the first one to to come forward, to take on a new task, to do more than is required, to suggest an innovative solution to a problem. Be that person, have that mindset of an executive and approach your career as a business leader. When, when I look at Craig's question again, and I'm wondering when we talk about attributes, Diane, what role does facilitation or facilitator as an attribute, what role can that play in our role as communicators and business partners, communication business partners? Hello? So I'm not sure what's happened. Um, I hope everybody can still hear me. I'm just going to see if Diane is still there.
So can anybody still, is people still on the line? Can anybody still hear me? Is, would anybody like to? Hi, I'm not sure what's happening. Hi, Jasna. If you allow me to step in, I see that Diane is offline. It says offline, so I suppose that there is a communication glitch and uh, she will um, come back as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, good. Well, uh, what can we do now? So one of my suggestions is um, let's move forward and have a look at the other slides and then as soon as she comes back, um, we can hear some more. Um, uh, but before I do that, um, maybe somebody has a suggestion about the question on facilitation and to what extent we can become facilitators or we should become facilitators. I see somebody was asking a question or suggesting. So anybody got any ideas on, on should we become facilitators? Can we? And how would that work? So let's see. So have we got Ginger on the line? I think Ginger, were you are you asking a question here? Okay, well let's um take a few minutes. And uh, let's uh, let's look at the other slides. Um, I will at at this point um, skip on to the next slide. So we talked about uh, what are the different executive communicators, how they contribute to business value. We've got three questions around that. Um, one is, will you get the business results your company needs this year? Um, just a second. Uh, hi, Diane. Are you are you able to connect to the Go Go to Webinar? Okay. 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 Good. Well, I will keep I will keep going, and as soon as you get in, then um, then we can continue. Um, no, so far I do not have any, any questions. What we can do here at this point, um, I, will just, um, I will just break the line here and if you would like to join us, um, but once your computer reboots, then I will switch to the presentation again. So let's have a look, in a sense, at uh, the summary of some of the things we heard today. Um, you know, how do we get on to, to get our seat at the table? So we heard from Diane that it's also it's about education. So one of the areas is being financially educated. So we heard about business education, but also. You know, are we are we familiar with the financial statements? You know, how much how much analyzing um, and reading of the financial statements do we do? And now, even if your role is perhaps not in financial communications, it can allow you to get a deeper understanding of the business, and uh, is also a way of relating to the C suite. We also heard from Diane about um, business survey, and of course, one of the key things one of the one of the key things we have 
one of the key advantages we have as communicators that we're very often we are very often communicate the strategy but is that really enough should we in a sense be getting our hands around some of that strategy and potentially even even helping the business leaders to to, to actually shape that strategy So if we start looking at, you know, how can we how can we get um, get a better understanding of the strategy and how can we get more involved in the strategy right from the start? Maybe it's something that we can facilitate. Maybe it's something we can um, help develop processes around it and oversee that process and make suggestions around that process in order to help us to, um, to position ourselves partially as well. So that's the point about being um, strategically savvy and using what we already know about uh, strategy to reach out and position ourselves uh, around business leaders. So I'm going to um, pick this up and see if this works. I'm not sure if everybody can see. Hello, Diane. Hi. Uh, yes, it's it's certainly been a challenge. So um, I've gone through one of your slides, um, and I think we're now nearing the close. So um, I'm not sure if people can see you. We've taken we've taken all the questions. We've answered all the all the questions that were suggested.
Uh, thank you very much, Diane, and thank you for bearing with us. I realize those technical problems can sometimes be um, totally overwhelming. And thank you very much for coming back um, and um, and for coming back on the um, on the webcam as well. So um, that was really really helpful. So of course these technical things happen, and we are improvising. Improvisation is one of the great attributes that we as communicators. Um, can continue to work on and today was a good opportunity for both myself and for Diane and um, and hopefully you all learned something from our improvisation and um, and, and I'm sure you will Thanks. Exactly, exactly. So I, um, I appreciate that. So what we'll do now is we will um, send around to those who attended, we'll send around this slide deck and um, with potentially a couple of takeaways, maybe that came out of the questions that were asked um, for you all then to receive. So you should get it tomorrow. And um, and with that, I thank everybody for joining and for those who asked questions. And we will work on uh, the technology for the hands up and um, and uh, turning on the microphones. And hopefully, we can get that uh, working again in the future. So with that, I thank everybody. Thank you, Diane, for sharing your your thoughts, and thank you for being with us at this very early morning in um, over in the states. Thank you very much. And with that, I will close. Thank you, Diane. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.